Bronson Kafusi, he has just been dominant. Fact! Bronson Kafusi! Kafusi's playing like a madman. Is hit! The ball is loose and... Ball thrown for the lead. There's Bronson, got oh. it! How about that catch? Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. We're live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton. He is Jerem Jordan. Listen, we are super stoked about Cody Epps announcing that he's coming back to BYU. But I would also like a dominant defensive lineman to go after the quarterback. Somebody to get some sacks yes. like, uh, you know, our next guest used to get him. Who is Bronson Kafusi? Bronson, yeah. welcome to the show, What's man. Up, man? Hey, hey, doing good. Thanks for having me. Hey, it was fun to watch your highlight reel, including uh, a touchdown catch in the alumni game. Man. Yeah, look at that. Uh, was there a miss... two-point conversion too in there or something? Uh, something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you yeah. miss your calling, not playing tight end at BYU? Well, it started that way, right? Yeah. Because yeah. that's what I got offered as uh, from Coach and I back in the day. I was offered as a tight end, and so, I mean, kind of a full circle doing it in the NFL, and then. Coming back and doing it, I mean, <laughs> it's always just been something I've always loved. So No one could guard you. <laughs> yeah, just throw it up. Right? In the alumni game? Yeah. I only went in on the red zone because I knew, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's where I'll yeah, succeed. Yeah, come on now. Come on now. <laughs> okay, so obviously the big news of the day, Cody Epps coming back. Uh, jumps in the portal Sunday night, announces right when we go on the air, we appreciate that, Cody, uh, that he's coming back. What's your reaction to that? <sighs> it's great. It's honestly great. Um, I kind of look at it from both sides of the, the picture where, I mean, guys – Guys can get paid now, yeah. and it changes the game. It truly does change the game, and there's going to be a lot of uh, moving pieces all the time. So uh, what's cool, though, is uh, everyone has to play it. So when people throw their name out now, uh, BYU can go after them. You know, it kind of creates an interesting uh, environment for everyone now. <laughs> I have mixed emotions about the transfer portal, which I'm guessing a lot of people do because it's great when it benefits your team and yeah. your program, but then situations arise where a Lauren Gustin can hop in and it's like, oh, no, scramble, 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 and BYU is fortunate to get her back. And the same can be said about Cody Epps. It was just mad scramble, and now he's back. So how do you view the transfer portal and how it's affecting college sports altogether? Are you, a, are you more of a fan or more of a detractor? <laughs> uh, for me, I'm definitely uh, more of a fan. And the reason is because it creates more opportunity and, uh, you know, options for the athletes. And I'm, I'm always, you know, one to side with the athletes and, uh, you know, what they can do now within it. It allows them to, to, to move and, uh, you know, gain some leverage somewhere. So it's, it, it's good. It does make it a challenge because it's year to year. Um, yeah. That idea of like, hey, we've got you, Bronson, for four years. is like, well, I have you for this year. And then hopefully you're here for next year. Um, if, if you were an athlete now, would it be hard to not want to explore what's in the portal, despite how much you loved BYU? Oh, yeah. Um, definitely. Because now you're able to earn uh, – you know, NIL opportunities every year. And it could increase every year. Yeah. And it could come from all different angles. So now it's, it's, it's a completely different ball game. And for me, I would, I would definitely every year be looking at, okay, what are my opportunities? But also I think there needs to be, you know, transparency from the players. Yes. Especially. Yes. Up front. Um, because that communication is key. And you want your athletes to be able to, uh, you know, come be like, hey, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think about this? This is what I'm being offered. This yeah. is what they're telling me. Yeah. Like, I'm interested in staying here. Do which, with this information what you will. Which, unless yeah. you're in the portal, um, is tampering. Uh, but, but everyone's doing it. Um, we'd like to think the BYU's not, um, you know, and, and hopefully dealing honestly, which BYU typically tries to do. But it can be a little messy, um, which is interesting. So the, in the transfer portal th this year, a lot of guys left after the season. I think Cougar Nation panicked a little bit. That was the sense on social media that we got. Yet BYU seems to have benefited uh, from a lot of guys. Uh, Keaton yeah. Slovis and Aiden Robbins, Eddie Heckard and Isaiah Banya and so on and so forth. Um, do you have a sense of which side of the ball may have benefited more in the portal this offseason for BYU? Man, that's a good question. Uh, for me, it... I kind of look at it where where are the gaps yeah and did we fill them 
and whatever side of the ball filled the gaps, yeah. that's who who won. It's hard not to mind. focus on the quarterback. <laughs> when exactly. The quarterback that's what I was going to say. Gap, right? yeah. And running back. And running back. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those are just two such prominent positions. That it's hard to lean away from that. But you are a defensive guy. And so along those lines, BYU. You, you play were, defense. I wouldn't call him defensive, though. Okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you play defense. You're a legend in that regard. <laughs> um, and I'm serious when I say I, I would love for BYU to go out and find a guy yes. like you and or Corbin to come and be able to rush off the edge and create some havoc. Um, as you look at BYU's defense, clearly there was a need on the defensive line to go and, and get better. So what's, what type of guy does BYU need to put on the edge? Like what, what will work in Jay Hill's scheme with four down linemen? Yeah, uh, you, you really want guys who create havoc with one-on-one -on -one okay. opportunities because, you know, with a four down front, you're going to be able to have one-on-one -on -one opportunities along the entire front. Uh -huh. And so if you can have a person that consistently wins one-on-ones all the time, now we can scheme. So, okay, we want that player to be one-on-one -on -one with this guy. All right, well then let's blitz here so the protection shifts and now it's one-on-one. -on -one. So now we're gonna give him the opportunity to get those sacks. And I felt like that was something that happened with me my senior year where you know, I was able to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities and then it's just, okay, it's on you to capitalize on it. And so for me, I, I knew before I even, I knew before the snap even went that I was going to have a one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> just because I knew the protection. I knew what we were doing up front. And I was like, oh, I got this guy by myself. Let's go beat him. I went through the sack numbers the other day, and I was like, oh, yeah, Brunson was really good. I knew this, but, like, looking at the numbers again, I was like, oh, six and a half, eight and a half. Da, da, da. Like, we've, BYU's previous scheme was, not necessarily to get those. It was to block it. It was to let the linebackers make plays and so on and so forth. Why? And now we feel like, uh, based on what Jay Hill said, more aggression, 4-3 front, more one-on-ones, right? Um, Utah has been really good at having great defensive linemen. BYU's had some good ones too, but they have been better at this. How does BYU get to the point where they're at that level? Pressure with four NFL guys on the D-line, like yourself. Yeah, well, first it starts with uh, who you bring in. And, and then it just starts with the day in, day out grind of coaching them up. Um, that's why I'm really excited because I, I know the coaches that are coaching, you know, the front seven. And I, I know they're awesome and they're going to get guys rolling. But, I mean, everything starts up front in football. And so if you can have four guys up front that can get pressure, I mean, it's just a dream come true for the back end because now they can, they can you know, sit back and, um, that ball is going to be coming out probably, you know, not exactly where the quarterback wants it to all the time just because uh -huh. of that pressure. And we have an extra guy back there. And so it truly changes the game if you can get guys that can create pressure. And so, I mean, just getting them in and showing, hey, this is what we do. Creating that culture of if you have a one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. you're going to win it. So BYU needs to recruit better at that position essentially. Get more and better guys at that position. Well, yes, there, and then also we have great players right now that I know so what's are going to be dominating. Then? What's been missing? Yeah, no, that, that's a good question. Um, well, scheme changes everything. Yes. Okay. So because you have strengths as a defensive lineman and someone that's blitzing all the time or rushing the quarterback, and if it doesn't, if your skills don't match the scheme, it makes it hard for you to shine and to make an impact. And so with this new scheme, people are going to be just blown away by the amount of pressure and uh, you know quarterback hurries, sacks that are going to be created because now these guys are going upfield first. Like their first thing is to attack, and that creates a lot of strengths, or it plays off a lot of strengths for certain players. Like in my mind, I'm thinking, I've known you know Tyler Batty forever. Yes, and I've known like I was coaching him at BYU basketball camp when I was coaching when he was, when he was like in fifth grade or something. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm watching him. And I look at his strengths, and I'm like, wow, he's so explosive. He's so he can, he can bend the edge. He has, you know, great, you know, hands. And it's like, wow, he's going to be someone that everyone needs to watch because he's going to just explode onto the scene just because the scheme is different. Okay. So BYU's, yeah. So in the past, BYU was, I wouldn't say passive, but it was like we would rather you take a 15-play drive and perhaps turn it over or uh, on downs or a penalty or something. That's the risk level we want. 
Is that accurate? And now it's, well, you may beat us over the top, but we're going to go for more havoc. Yeah, quickly. I love that because, I mean, a, a saying that a lot of defensive players hear a lot of the time is pressure breaks pipes. And so it's like, if we can pressure with less people, I mean, that creates more turnovers. And so that's why, the, I mean, it's going to be awesome to just see defense alignment just attacking mm. all game long. Yeah. And you're going to see a lot, a lot of plays made in the backfield. I believe the phrase from Jay Hill was to Siali uh, Acera, we're going to attack and let the big dogs eat. Let the okay. big dogs eat, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you brought up Tyler Batty. Isaiah Banya, the transfer from Boise State, is we think going to be on the opposite edge. Um, and you talk about winning one-on-ones. How do you – what's the best way to prepare for that? You've done this in many camps, and you've been through the NFL, and, and you've been through several different camps with teams. So like, what are the things that, that have to happen to help you develop those one-on-one -on -one skills? Yeah. Well, first thing is you have to create ownership of that. You know, I'm, I'm not just going out there and, hey, I got a one-on-one, -on -one, great. No, it's I have to win. Like, I will win this one-on-one -on -one right now. And they're going to come throughout the game. And so you can't ever slow down as a rusher because you only have maybe 20, 30, maybe 20 true rushes a game. And we just need you to win on one of them, two of them. Yeah. You know, and the rest, it might, there might be pressures or something. But, I mean, it's just having that mindset of I will win every one-on-one -on -one that I get. And I think that's huge. And then from there, it's just practicing the little details every day during practice, getting better, um, going up against the best player on the team during practice. That, that's who you want to go up against every single day. Um, because when you go out there you know, on game day, you're going up against their best. And so if you're always going up against someone that's maybe not our best, it actually doesn't transition. So. Uh, being able to have that mentality of I'm just going to work every day and I'm going to get better. And then when the game comes around, it's time to cut it loose. Like, that's the fun part. Like, it's like, okay, I could do this live. And uh, I, I, always, I always look forward to that. Like, I know it's third down and long. I know what's coming. I get this guy one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> <laughs> it's my time to eat. Let's, no, go. Let's go ahead and throw a Tyler Batty up against Kingsley Suamatai on the rag in practice, shall we? <laughs> yeah, every, every, every play. Every play. <laughs> that's a fun matchup, right? <laughs> Um, and they may be on other, the other side. It depends where they put them. But um, when it comes to hoops, certainly the transfer portal, it's busy for BYU. Um, as a former BYU basketball player, what's your sense of kind of where the program is and what they're trying to add to be at least interesting in the Big 12, which would be a real challenge? Yeah, no, definitely. It, it will be a challenge. Uh, but I think it's, you know, a great opportunity for us to go in and just, you know, I mean, the pressure. Is there pressure? I, I don't know in basketball. What is the pressure is a good question. I don't, I don't yes. know. It's not to win the league. It's definitely not to be in the top four or five. It's to be bubblicious, to be in yeah, the be, hunt. Be, be considered for a tournament spot. To get year? a couple really nice wins, to pack the Marriott Center and, and challenge and win a few games that yeah. maybe people don't expect you to against some of the big guys. I love that. No, yeah. I love that. Like if I'm, on the, that. if I'm on the basketball team right now, I'm thinking, oh, I'm just going to go in and show them like we belong here. Like, and, and we, we are here to, you know, com to compete and we're going to, you know, never back down. And, and it's really a good time to come and show them, okay, hey, oh, yeah, we're, we're, yeah. we're here to stay. Like, Give me a sense of this. In the WCC, there was pressure to not mess up. Oh, we're at Pepperdine. We're supposed to win this game. Well, BYU went 6-6. Six and six. Like, it was tough. Now you never have a game like that in conference. You, in theory, could be an underdog in almost every game, home or road. Oh, I love that. What yeah. kind of uh, difference does that make for a player where the pressure isn't, hey, you have to win this game because they're not that good on paper, whereas it's like, well, actually, this team's in the top 75 in all these metrics. Like, you shouldn't win that game. I feel like BYU is a better underdog than favorite. I don't know what it is or why, but that BYU typically operates this way. I love that because it's like, let's get up for this game. Well, every BYU game. Every, like, game. We're the every, game. In every game. Let's get it's, up for this game. It's all every St. Game. Mary's and Gonzaga yeah. type games. I love that. Like, I, I, I think just because of that, we're going to thrive a lot more than what people think, which is a great place to be, you know, honestly. <laughs> it really is. All right, before you go, we need to ask you uh, to get the update on Corbin. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 So how how are things going with Corbin in his professional career as he plays in the USFL and it's a new adventure? What's what are things like for Corbin? 
Oh man, yeah, he's playing this year and uh, you know really doing a good job. Last who's, year, who's he with again? Bur- he's with the uh, the Memphis Showboats. The Showboats. Memphis Showboats. And Troy Warner's there too. Yeah, right? Troy's there. Very nice. Yeah, so he's hanging out with Troy a lot. Um, it's going really well. It's it's just cool to see how you know last year when he was playing in the league, he was doing just an incredible job. You know, one of the best O linemen in the whole league as far as pass protection. All these different ratings. Catching passes. Yeah, catching passes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Running after. I was like, whoa. Um, but it was, it was just so cool to see him like coming into his own, really, you know, being able to play that position at a high level now. And so I'm, I, I'm excited for him. Um, and I love watching him play because it's like, wow, he's, he's just one of those freak athletes. It's yeah. like. Like, you're looking at my TV, you're like, oh, yeah, he's pretty big. But then you see him in person, it's like, oh, my gosh, this guy is just <laughs> And you're huge. saying that? Yeah. No, I'm saying that, yeah. You, you look up to your little no, brother, seriously. right? seriously. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I do. And it's, it's, it's so crazy he's to me. He's a giant. I, I, don't, I don't mess with him anymore. You know, we're not, we're not wrestling. I'm not, I, I know what fights to pick. You know, it's like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. You're like, Devin, he, come here. I thought, he was, I thought he was going to become a professional bodybuilder. He right? could do, yeah, that or he, he wants to do boxing now. He so. wants to do boxing? <laughs> yeah, he does boxing too. Dude, so we'll do, have to go watch a MMA? fight. Like he would be the biggest dude in MMA. Yeah. Like, well, he probably would be really good at it. What honestly. is he, right? Like 6'10", 3", what? He's probably like 335 right now, Whew. which is like down from what he was at. He was like at 365 at one point. Wow. So when we were in New York together. So... Yeah, he's he's down, which is weird because like 335 is down. So, <laughs> yeah, you said it. Yeah, yeah. I'm already thinking of like potential boxing nicknames or MMA nicknames like Kafusi Kong. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, something like that. I like that one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Hey, it's great to have you in studio, Bronson. Hey, we thanks. Appreciate the time. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. We appreciate go way it. back with Bronson, by the way. You, you were a wide-eyed freshman on the tip you basketball and 14 football team. years young and we were doing <laughs> high school games when we were BYU students some fun memories there you they were they were back, fun man. good games <laughs> my call for sure that was a good yeah one. that was a good one yeah. <laughs> go look it up go look it up my call last second show oh man thanks Bronson yeah appreciate it okay